Hey, I'm Mike Taylor. I'm the founder of VexPower. And I get asked all the time from people, like, what do you get when you pay for a marketing mix model? Or what do you get when you build one yourself? Uh, and rather than answering that question multiple times, I feel like I just need to put it into a blog post, into a video, uh, so I can show people and point, point people to this resource. Uh, so uh, I think, you know, the answer is actually, it depends. Like, what does a marketing mix model look like? Uh, it really depends on how much budget you have. Uh, and I think typically it breaks down to either like it's a $500 type project, uh, you know, $5,000 type project or uh, $50,000 plus. Um, and if you're in the Fortune 500, uh, then you would expect your marketing mix model to cost at least 50K uh, because your business is more complex and, and a lot more work. Um, and also enterprise companies get charged a lot more. Um, what I usually deal with is more in the $500 range and, and actually I have um, a training simulator business uh, called VexPower, uh, which walks you through how to build a model in an afternoon. Uh, and that's about you know, 500 bucks worth of time for an analyst on your team. Uh, so check that out if you are interested. Um, if you don't wanna go through the training simulator, I actually have a blog post uh, that you can go through and the template from that blog post uh, is what we're going to use uh, to, to show you what an output of a marketing mix model looks like. So you can see here, uh, this is, you know, just in Google Sheets, uh, you don't need anything that that complicated, to be honest, which is one of the reasons why I think marketing mix modeling should be used a lot more often, should be as common as cohort analysis. Um, and, and essentially, uh, all you need to do is get your data into this format. Um, so here we have sales, uh, and then we have the different factors that will impact sales. In this case, it's the price of the product, how much you spend on advertising, and then whether that you know, week uh, contained a holiday. So uh, you know, it could be weekly, it could be daily, it could be monthly, it really doesn't matter, um, other than you know, if you have daily data, uh, that's more data points. So you should be uh, more accurate with your model. Cool, so uh, the way that this works is just the linest function, uh, which does a multivariable regression um, basically, we try and predict sales based on the price of the product, the advertising, and the holidays. Um, and the way that it does this, it's easier to see if you just look at, um, you know, individual variables one by one. You can see that price is correlated with sales inversely. Essentially, the more, you know, the price increases, the lower the sales. Um, and you can see there's a correlation there. And what the model is trying to do is tease apart, like, how much of the change in sales was due to the price, versus you know, how much was due to the advertising and how much was due to the holiday. And it comes up with those answers, which are called coefficients. And what these coefficients will say is how much sales changes uh, based on one unit of this input. So um, it's saying that we make $89 more uh, when, we, uh, when it's a holiday and we, you know, we lose uh, $17 when we increase the price by a dollar. So uh, that's, that's generally how this works. Uh, and you can work it all out in Excel. Um, you, it actually gives you this, uh, the statistics. It can tell you um, what the R squared value is. This is how much uh, of the changes um, in the data uh, did, uh, did your model predict. So this is 0.83, which is pretty accurate. Uh, you can explain 83% of the changes in sales. Um, and, and it's not unusual to see a model get to 60, 70, 80% um, uh, accuracy, uh, even just in Excel. You don't need really complex code uh, if you're just looking for uh, a basic model like this. Uh, where you do need code is where it starts to get more complicated. You have lots of variables and you're transforming those variables, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, before we do that, let me just show you how this works. So uh, once you have your coefficients, you can create a forecast. Um, and the forecast is basically uh, the value for that week multiplied by the coefficient for that variable. Um, and then uh, you do the same for each variable, add them all together. Uh, and then you also add the intercept, which is the baseline. Uh, if you didn't, if you, know, you didn't change the price advertising or holiday, uh, how many sales would you still get? Um, and that gives you the forecast. You can also break it out by channel. Um, so that's how you get the decomposition. You can see basically, you know, how, uh, what, what, what impact did that variable have? Uh, so you can see that 50, you know, $65 uh, dollars of uh, sales uh, came from ads that day. Um, and then that's represented uh, in this area chart here. So it's, you can see that price was a negative factor. Um, and then uh, you have uh, holiday ads and the baseline, uh, which make up the positive factors. 
cool. So um, uh, the final thing is you can actually kind of eyeball the accuracy. I think R squared uh, is, you know, not necessarily that interpretable, but if you can see basically that the sales, the actual sales match the forecasted sales, uh, then you can be relatively certain that, you know, going forward, uh, this is a really good guess as to um, what is going to happen in the future. You can project this forward. Um, and that's actually what's going on here uh, with this forecast. Um, you can see what we've done is just added extra days um, and then put in some values that we think we're going to spend, you know, 3K on advertising, 4K on advertising on these weeks. Um, and then we're going to change the prices here. And we also know when the holidays are going to be. Um, and then basically you can forecast forward. Um, you can also, you know, plan scenarios like this. So you can say, like, I'm going to spend 10 on advertising uh, for the rest of this time. And then you can see that the sales uh, forecast has changed. Uh, you can also do transformations. So I won't go too much into this, but ad stocks is basically, you know, how much um, carryover effect is there from week to week for the advertising variable. So uh, you can see basically we had, um, you know, we spent 3.3K on advertising that week. Um, and there's a 20% carryover rate, uh, which means that um, we add up 20% uh, of 3.3 and the new 3.3 that we spent, and that gives us the ad stock. Um, so that's basically a way of um, you know, forecasting out uh, what was the impact of uh, a channel um, after you know, the day that the spend ran. Um, it's particularly useful for like brand advertising, TV advertising, when uh, you, know, you might have sales coming from that TV ad um, you know, days, weeks, maybe even months uh, or years after it ran. Uh, we can also do something like diminishing returns, which is actually the you know main thing that I've been doing. Um, you know, with with marketing mix modeling uh, is is like when you increase your spend, say you increase your spend on Facebook ads, um, like say you double it, uh, are you going to get double the sales? Uh, probably not. Um, so uh, what diminishing returns does is a transformation like ad stocks. It helps you figure out where the sale is going to get uh, less efficient. And in this case, it doesn't, um, you know, uh, like it doesn't show a very clear impact, but um, you can check how uh, diminishing returns blog post here. Um, and in this model, you can see it much more clearly. Uh, so you can see that, you know, as we increase spend, uh, CPA went up. Um, and then you can actually kind of see the diminishing curve here. So again, I won't go too much into the um, into the mechanics of this and the statistics, but you know, just know that all this is possible in Excel, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, another reason I've used marketing mix model uh, modeling in Excel um, is that you can do something like uh, find correlations between different uh, different variables, uh, even if you're not building a marketing mix model. So this is the correlation between uh, new direct users and uh, active users. Uh, so basically what we found was um, that there's a pretty stable and predictive ratio of uh, word of mouth uh, new users uh, to existing. So what that is telling you is that um, the more active users you have, uh, the more chances they have to refer um, and to tell other people about your product. Um, so if you improve retention, um, then you should see an increase in um, new users coming directly. So uh, definitely check this out. There's also a template in here as well. Cool. So um, that's uh, you know that's a lot, right? Like you can do quite a lot in Excel. Uh, and I would say that you know once you have the templates and you understand you know how this works, uh, you could basically do it in you know a few hours um, uh, for for a relatively simple business. Um, it's going to take um, you know an afternoon, uh, maybe a day, two days. Uh, maximum um, if you have a lot of data to clean um, or a lot of variables to play around with. Uh, if you do have a lot of variables, uh, then I recommend going to the next level, which is uh, Python code, um, or uh, you know, some a lot of people use R, which is a statistics specific uh, coding language. Um, so I, I prefer Python because I use it for lots of things. Like you know, once you've written this code, you could actually build a tool, you know, like I've done in the past. Um, actually, I have a whole kind of Python library uh, that I've written, which is, you know, maybe about a thousand lines, uh, 700 lines of code, uh, which does, you know, all the kind of stuff <laughs> that you need to do in order to build a model. Um, and I can run this and it generates all the images, you know, generates generates all the um, Excel, you know, Excel files, 
uh, for me uh, and it even kind of goes through and then chooses which variables are significant. So it uses something like, uh, it's, it's called backwards feature elimination. Uh, basically, you know, it will try every, mo every variable that it gives you. Um, and then if, if one variable is not working um, in the model, like it doesn't show up as statistically significant, it will drop it for you. Uh, and it'll keep doing that until all the variables are significant. Um, so there's lots of cool stuff you can do there. Uh, I also have another script that automatically finds the diminishing returns for you. So, you know, rather than you having to change this, you know, and say, is the diminishing returns 0 0.1? Well, um, no, actually, actually, like the accuracy is not, not that good here. The red dots are really far away from the blue, um, you know, and then maybe try 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you know, and you see it's getting closer. Um, well, basically, um, one of the benefits of code is uh, you can just run a million simulations if you wanted to uh, with every possible value of B, um, and then it will just tell you which one was the most accurate. So uh, that's the other major reason why it might make sense to use code um, and uh, use a data scientist in your team to do that. Um, wh what does the output look like once you do this? So um, I typically try and put it into a presentation and you can see an example here, I'll, I'll put it in the notes, um, but uh, typically you have some interpretation of the model by the analyst. Uh, the, the, you know, the money shot here is uh, showing what contribution there was for each channel and then telling you uh, whether like it actually matches up with what you know Facebook tells you or what Google tells you, um, because it's really important to actually check that like yes, you know Facebook is a big driver. Um, actually, Facebook used to massively overreport um, because they would claim every conversion that happened within 24 hours of a view of an ad. Uh, so if you're doing a lot of retargeting or if you're spending a lot, uh, then um, it's going to claim a lot of conversions that shouldn't have happened uh, or it would have happened anyway. Actually, now with iOS 14, Facebook is under claiming uh, because they don't have visibility on iOS 14. They can't track the users uh, as well as they used to. So, uh, so now actually Facebook isn't getting the credit it deserves uh, when it used to claim too much. Uh, and marketing mix model modeling can really help you figure that out. Um, and you can see here, this is an example of an auto-generated chart. Um, and then uh, this is, you know, the revenue versus the prediction. Uh, and then I just kind of copy and pasting that into the presentation. But you could actually just auto generate these presentations as well. Um, Google Slides has a pretty good API. Yeah, if you want to get around to coding that, just let me know. And I would definitely use it. Um, cool. So, uh, so I would say, uh, like, one more thing to show you, uh, because, just to kind of show you how complex it can get. Um, I'm just going to bring up, let's see. Uh, here's an example of uh, Facebook's Robin uh, marketing mix model. So actually, let me just show you the uh, okay, Robin Facebook, and it's not Robin the musician. It's uh, <laughs> it's this one here. Uh, so they open sourced some code that they use to run marketing mix models, and it's in R. Uh, so it's a little bit complicated, and you can see like this is what it looks like. Um, you know, I. It actually takes a really long time to run. Uh, so just on the um, the ex you know, example data, it's, it took my computer about four hours with six cores, which is like, it's a gaming laptop, so it's like pretty fast. Um, so, so yeah, it can take a long time to run this. They, they you know, generate, you know, thousands and thousands of models uh, and, and loop through all the potential values of the parameters uh, to find the exact right model that works for you. Uh, and then once you get the output, it looks like this. So. Um, they can, you know, they're doing some pretty crazy stuff. So like, you know, this is a waterfall chart, but it just shows you, this is the same as the decomposition chart that we talked about, it shows you how, you know, how much um, of, uh, yeah, of your sales come from each channel. Uh, this is actual versus predicted. So this is just like we saw in Excel. Um, the, but they also do like crazy stuff like this. So um, uh, they, uh, show you how much spend your media channels got versus how much they should have got, right? So they actually have like an optimizer that will reallocate your budget. It's, it's in beta, uh, but it would reallocate your budget based on the model and tell you how much you should be spending, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and then they have the response curves uh, for each channel. So you can kind of see the diminishing returns here. Um, and it, and it, it I calculates it in a way that's like much more sophisticated <laughs> than uh, that what I was doing in Excel or with my script. Um, so um, the reason I show you this is because, um, you know, they probably won't use Robin specifically, but they would use code like this 
um, if you hire a, an econometrics modeling firm, uh, like a traditional one. Uh, and those projects will be really expensive because you know it's taken them a long time to write this code and to get it the way they, you know, everyone has their secret source, a black box that they don't really tell you how it works. Um, and that can be sometimes kind of crap, but, um, but, but you know, in other cases it gets really good results. Um, so um, I would say uh, the majority of what you're paying for though is like not necessarily the sophistication uh, when you're paying for a 50K plus project, but really the admin, because it just costs a lot of money uh, to work with an enterprise um, client. Uh, like I, I used to run an agency uh, called Ladder. You know, we got to like 50 people and we worked with a few big names, uh, a couple of Fortune 500 companies. And honestly, it's like very expensive to service them. Uh, they need, you know, a meeting about what meetings uh, they need to have that week. <laughs> and it's not true of every enterprise company. And actually some small companies are just as bad. Uh, but uh, just in general, uh, like, you know, no, nobody ever works with an enterprise company um, uh, once and then doesn't increase their prices, right? Because, uh, because it's, uh, you know, as soon as you get the first one, you're like, great, I have a case study. Uh, then you really bump up your prices uh, because it's so expensive to work with them. Uh, and then also, you know, you need to make a lot more money uh, because uh, the projects, uh, you know, take longer um, you know, more stakeholders, it's, it's, it takes longer to close the deals, right? Because you have to go through procurement. procurement. Um, uh, so, so everything just uh, costs a lot more. It's not necessarily the work, uh, that's a lot more work, uh, but, but just that, you know, as a services business, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's much more expensive for them to work with you if you're an enterprise. Uh, cool, so, uh, so that's the landscape. I'm, I'm hoping that gave you a good understanding. Um, I'm, uh, I'm working on this business, VexPower, which teaches marketing links modeling. Uh, and if you haven't tried it already, uh, you can sign up for free and do this uh, free training simulator. It actually kind of walks you through how um, a marketing links modeling project might, might work in the real world. So you get an email from the CEO who asks you, you know, how's TV doing? Um, and you have to kind of walk through uh, as the, you know, the VP of growth uh, and then, um, you know, we actually kind of give you fake data to work on uh, and, and you, you actually go through the act of building a model. Um, so, uh, you know, this is a great introduction. I, you know, have um, a paid version as well, uh, which you can pre-order and I've been onboarding people for, um, but it's still, still in production uh, com coming in the next, uh, next month or so. So, um, so, yeah, take a look at this, um, but also ask me any questions. Um, you know, I, I definitely am trying to like understand um, you know, what, what people need to know about marketing mix modeling. I think iOS 14 has created a lot more interest in it uh, and uh, just trying to uh, kind of make sure my content is really good. So, uh, you know, feel free to pick my brain. Um, you know, uh, we can jump on a Zoom call, uh, you know, more than happy to answer any questions you have. Cool. I hope this is useful.